Okay, well, this is uh, this is Peter Jones giving a, a review for uh, Formula Barat uh, 2021 uh, virtual design. Um, and I thank all the teams again for showing up. It's uh, it's not easy in the time of Corona keeping a Formula team together and and keeping uh, your goals in mind and keeping the team motivated. So I want to congratulate everybody that participated because that says an awful lot to your orientation as professional engineers. So let's see, let me just get started uh, with, with something simple. I, I, I want to thank the whole field because uh, all the years I've been out in uh, Coimbatore, apparently some of you are actually listening to me, uh, like the teams that I, I would tell that, uh, you know, when you do a finite element analysis uh, of a part, um, there shouldn't be anything blue. And what I meant is that you shouldn't have any material that you're not using. Uh, but I'm afraid what a, a few of you uh, seem to have understood is that there should be no parts that are blue. And so I saw a lot of finite element stress maps where the color scale had been changed so that everything came out red. So thank you for listening to me. Now let's go ahead and try and reduce the mass of that part by making sure that there are no unstressed pieces to it, that uh, uh, pieces that uh, material that is not stressed is, is removed. So. Thank you, and that's not quite what I meant. Okay, so just in general, I wanted to make a comment on the presentations. Okay, this is something that you will be doing throughout your engineering career, is presenting difficult concepts and designs to audiences who are generally familiar with the area that you're talking about, but are not familiar with your specific design or the figures that you're showing. So. Uh, the teams that are most guilty about this, uh, I have abused during uh, Q&A uh, and other feedback on design, but I just wanted to make the general comment. Listen to your presentations once you've recorded them and ask the question, would someone not from your team actually understand what it is that you're saying? The, the presentations in general are too fast. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware of the Pareto principle, which holds that 80% uh, of the benefit is achieved by 20% of the content. I suggest that you give up the last few percents of content so that you can be sure that the benefit is absorbed. Slow down and communicate your message. Okay, to, uh, to the same point, a lot of your slides are much too busy with much too information. And I'll tell you something about uh, human cognition in, uh, in watching a presentation. If you keep your slides very short with uh, simple pictures and short, simple phrases, then the human mind can read those as a graphic and understand them without disengaging from listening to the speaker. But as soon as you start to write paragraphs or long detailed uh, graphics or, or tables, then the listener has to stop listening in order to read the slide. You don't want them to do that. You want them to stay engaged to the speaker and you want the slide to support what the speaker is saying. Uh, if there is a slide, then the audience should have the opportunity to absorb what is said on that slide. Otherwise, the slide is not supporting your presentation. It's getting in the way. It's interfering with your presentation. So please uh, proofread uh, your presentations by giving them to yourselves, giving them to people not on the team, and asking for their help. They'll come back and say, well, I don't know anything about formula cars. Uh, so how can I judge the presentation that you've given me? And the answer to you on that score is, well, the reason they don't know anything about formula cars is because you didn't tell them. So please take greater care with your presentations. It will improve uh, your formula performance and it'll improve your engineering careers. Okay, so uh, I do want to say that uh, overall this year, uh, the, the teams in general, uh, demonstrated pretty good uh, use and awareness and, uh, and capability with engineering design tools. Uh, analysis, uh, vehicle dynamics, um, uh, vehicle engineering uh, concepts uh, seem to be pretty well understood. The uh, level of design for fabrication seems to be pretty good. Uh, we're a, a long, long way from uh, where Formula Barat was uh, four or six years ago. Um, 
and uh, the, the level of the field is, has really been coming up. So what you've been learning has been showing. Uh, so mostly what I'm talking about for the, the rest of this review is how to take the next step, how to go on from understanding what a role center is and how to get it, understanding how a bearing uh, selection works and, and how to do it without uh, making mistakes, understanding how to uh, compute volumetric throw or flow rate through a restrictor. You're, you're getting that and that's, that's working. Okay, so I'd like to talk about uh, design organization. I've said this to a few of the teams, the only purpose for a Formula Barat car is as a machine to get points at Formula Barat. That's all it does. It doesn't have another racing series. Uh, you will not use it for your own personal sports car. Um, its lifetime is limited to uh, a few short events plus 20 minutes of endurance. And so as a machine, it's much more specialized than general vehicle or, or road car design. It is a different animal and deserves to be designed to be a different animal. Okay, so for instance, if it's a machine to get points, then your design process should start with a points analysis. How many points does your team want to get? How many points can your team realistically plan to get? It's fine to write down that you're going to win the competition. In that case, you'll need a strategy. Which events are you going to win? Which events are you going to do okay in? How many points does okay mean? If you think that winning is beyond your grasp, all right. Are we looking at top 10? If we're looking at top 10, well, what is the strategy for performance in each event that will yield a top 10 placing? Uh, for the performance in each one of those events, what is a car capability that will yield top 10 placing? So now you're comparing points, probably in past events, possibly in uh, uh, competitions in other countries uh, to connect say a number of points in say the acceleration event to the acceleration capability of the car now you've got an engineering design goal if we can say what the car should uh, should reach 75 meters in then that gives you uh, a way to evaluate weight it gives you a way to evaluate thrust it gives you a way to evaluate traction it gives you a way to evaluate the the thrust curves uh, from your powertrain so Underlying desire for an overall place to quantitative desire for a strategy to get points to uh, engineering design goals for the overall car uh, parsed into characteristics for the individual systems that support the overall car goals. And so I, I think what, uh, uh, what I saw missing and what most of the judges uh, this year saw missing was a uh, feeding back the system capabilities, uh, engine, drivetrain, chassis, braking, uh, vehicle dynamics, to the overall capability of the car, designing to, uh, to targets, and then uh, validating that those targets have been met, iterating to be sure that those targets have been met uh, optimally. Okay, so reviewing again, uh, get, getting the points, strategy to the points, performance to get the points, characteristics uh, of the car to yield the performance, uh, system goals to support the car characteristics. Okay, on team organization, um, engineering project management uh, is a feedback process. So for instance, if there are goals for weight, most of you had goals for weight that you were working on and what I saw in most of your efforts to produce those weights was you produced a number for a, a desired weight, then designed the car, and then calculated the final weight, and, and that was the end of the process. Okay, so that's called design for hope. That's called hoping that the car is going to come out light. A better way to do it would have been to take that desired weight uh, based on past experiences of yourselves and of other teams uh, break that weight into sections of the car so that each individual designer has a weight target. And then each individual designer strives to meet that weight target, giving feedback as in this is easy, I can go for better, or this is impossible, I'll have to, to trade weight with another section. Uh, but there is a, a, 
the overall goal has been broken into smaller goals, and then there's feedback about whether the uh, smaller goals have been achieved or not, so that the overall car goal can be adjusted or the strategy for reaching that goal can be adjusted. And so that the design becomes a feedback loop instead of a, uh, an open process. Okay, um, same thing can be said about cost. You, you all have mentioned cost as a constraint and cost is always a constraint for every engineering design. The proper engineering professional design method for dealing with cost is the same as it is for dealing with weight. I know that you're trying to gather funds throughout the year and you're not sure how much money you're going to have, um, but you can estimate based on past years uh, or based on current projections, what your budget is likely to be. And of course, you can always keep in mind if you had extra money, what would you spend it on? Or if you had to decrease cost, what would you, how would you change the design? But my point is, is that cost is another overall car uh, parameter, which can be broken into budgets per section which can be designed in detail to see if the sections are meeting those goals and then the result fed back to the overall car goal for budget. Um, I've seen a number of teams uh, make, um, oh, a, a typical one would be choice of uh, uh, mild steel instead of chromoly uh, for the frame. Uh, Several teams uh, justified their decision well on technical grounds, and um, I'll, to you I'll say well done. For the ones that said that they just couldn't afford the chromoly, um, if you also had OZ wheel rims, then I'd, I'd say I don't quite believe you. So what I'm asking you to do is instead of having everybody on the team feel like things should be cheap, instead make a strategy for how are you going to keep it cheap and how can you get the most points out of the cheapest car. Again, this is a matter of uh, design organization and engineering project management. Okay, um, looking through uh, the design process, uh, I want to point out that uh, the design that you're doing is not so much uh, to create a feasible design, a car that will run as an optimal design, a car that will run best. Now, I know a lot of you have never designed a, a moving uh, four-wheeled vehicle before. So you might consider feasible to be a reasonable first goal. I could, I could argue with you on that either way, but uh, the intent of the formula competition is that you design for the best capable, for <laughs> optimal. Um, we're, we're not in the business of handing you a kit and, and saying, uh, build it. Uh, we're in the business of asking you as engineers, what do you think will produce the best Formula Barat car? And can you defend your, uh, your decisions in order to produce, produce that best car? And in better years, can, can you build it and will it actually perform? So that means that you're not looking for a solution that will fit. You're not looking for a suspension geometry that is consistent. You're not looking for a powertrain arrangement uh, that will connect to the rear wheels. You're looking for the powertrain arrangement that will best connect to the rear wheels, that will get you the most points in the events that you decided were your design targets. Uh, optimal design is iterative. So it's not doing it once and saying, we've got a factor of safety greater than two, we're in good shape. Uh, optimal design says, well, if we've got a factor of safety that's greater than two and two is all we wanted, can't we go back and reduce the weight in order to get a, a better overall car performance? So again, best, not just good enough. Okay, the easiest way to do that is design to targets. So every, uh, every system has numerical goals that it's designing to. So Design for hope would be uh, you have no target and you wait to see what it turns out. That's poor practice. Uh, design to target means that the target is well been chosen to be part of your uh, recipe for success and the job of the system designer is to meet that target. Okay, um, going back to the idea that this is not a road car. Uh, saw an awful lot of material choices made on the basis of uh, 
uh, corrosion resistance. For a road car, that's very important. It's going to have a pick your lifetime, um, five, 10, 20 years. Uh, if it were a road car that I were driving in an Indian city, its lifetime would probably be about 20 minutes. Uh, I, I am in awe of the skill that it takes to, to navigate uh, the roads of uh, Delhi or Mumbai. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm getting off point. The, the, the point is that uh, corrosion is not really important to your race car whose only job is to live for short events plus 20 minutes of endurance. If you ask your automotive engineering professors, they will tell you that it is important. And they're speaking from the point of view of, of, of a volume manufacture, of a, uh, of a uh, social appliance that is going to have a, a long lifetime and live in an exposed environment. Your car is none of these. So your car should be focused on the problem that your car approaches, not that of a road car. Uh, I picked a corrosion. I'm also going to pick driver comfort. Now, your drivers are actually fairly capable, uh, adaptable human beings. Uh, they can live without a great deal of comfort. Uh, they're not going to be spending all day sitting in that car. Uh, they'll spend way too long waiting for the, the start of, uh, of autocross. Yeah, all right. So they'll sit in it for a while. But what comfort should mean to you is the driver is an athlete. The car is a piece of athletic equipment. The car should be designed so that the driver can perform his athletic best in the car. So for instance, um, doing uh, driver fit in, in two dimensions uh, to get the seat back angles and, and pedal positions is fine. Um, but you're gonna spend most of your time in, in lateral Gs, uh, in lateral Gs greater than one. So I would have to ask what that, uh, what that two dimensional uh, ergonomic model does for you. You're really kind of trying to keep the driver's uh, uh, elbows and, and knees in place more than you are trying to give your, your driver a, a comfortable seat position. I would take comfort out as a design condition and replace it with uh, the ergonomic ability of your driver to perform. Okay, uh, related to this not being a road car, I see a lot of interest in uh, uh, vibration isolation. Uh, one team told me that they had testing data and that they had uh, tested the car with and without vibration isolation and the car did better with it. Tough to argue against that. Uh, but I will say in general, again, if you ask your automotive engineering professors what's important, they're going to come back with noise, vibration, and harshness. And that is a road car answer. It's not a race car answer. Um, you're not going to shake anything apart. You're not going to fatigue anything. You're not going to kill your driver uh, with vibration over the length of the events that you're planning. Um, really noise vibration and harshness uh, other than uh, a noise test uh, are not issues that you should be focusing on and wasting weight and wasting cost and wasting uh, fabrication time on. So I would challenge that. Okay. Um, let's see. In, in general, on design process, uh, one of the best comments I've ever heard, and I've repeated this to a, a number of uh, Formula Barat teams, is that uh, everything in the car should have a reason. There should be an engineering reason for everything. An engineering reason means that it's not picked out of the sky. Uh, it's not your opinion. It's something that you can back up with, uh, with some logic, possibly with some analysis. Um, I'll give an example of this. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the nose cones that a lot of the cars have. Um, I saw a lot of uh, computational fluid dynamics for, uh, for nose cones. Um, I would have to ask, uh, was based on the computational fluid dynamics, was there a change in the shape of the nose cone to reduce drag? Uh, in that case, there would be an engineering reason for the shape that you, you chose. If the analysis is there just to be an analysis, I would have to say that was a waste of team resources. In the case of the CFD for the nose cone, uh, most cases, this was a nose cone by itself without the car uh, behind the nose. And so its weight conditions are messed up. And so I'd say the CFD analysis isn't really valid anyway. 
Um, engineering analysis should inform design decisions. That's why engineering analysis should be iterative. That's why uh, those parts that turn out to be all blue or all red uh, should be analyzed over and over and over again, removing weight each time until the part performs up to its requirement and nothing more. If your goal is a factor of safety of, of two, then you should achieve that factor of safety and remove everything else, remove all the other material. Okay, so overall, uh, the cars that Formula Barat is developing, the uh, sort of standard uh, Formula Barat car, if you like, if there is such a thing, um, is getting pretty good. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's getting lightweight. It could stand to be a lot lighter. Uh, the, the KTM engine is doing well, though, again, uh, teams should understand the reason. Teams should understand what it is that they want out of an engine and then compare the available alternatives to their engine requirements instead of going directly to looking at what engines are available and picking between the engines. Remember, it's not about the engine's characteristics, it's about the engine and car combination characteristics, and you should have a target uh, before you start comparing alternatives. Okay, but um, that that model, uh, the, the typical Formula Barat car with, uh, with a KTM, uh, often with a spool, uh, pretty low, pretty light, um, pretty good handler in, in most cases. Uh, one of the things that's holding you back is uh, uh, that big boxy front. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, several teams are, are looking into uh, clutchless uh, shifting. Um, the big advantage of clutchless shifting is you can do without that third pedal. If you can do without that third pedal, then uh, the front becomes uh, narrower and lower, which means your drag goes down. Uh, which means that your structural weight goes down, which means that your uh, driver's view goes up. Uh, all sorts of good things happen. Um, I'd say more teams should be moving in the direction of trying to remove that, uh, that third pedal uh, and making the, uh, the vehicle less, uh, less boxy. Another reason for that is that without the third pedal, the driver's legs are never moving, which means that ergonomics uh, can be designed to keep the driver in place instead of allow freedom of movement. In a 2G turn, and in a 1.5G turn, um, what you want is uh, to hold the driver in place rather than give the dr driver freedom. So overall, uh, just as a, as a sum up for the review, things are, are going well. Things need to be better organized uh, in order to, to make the next step to uh, to really taking a place on the international stage. And I guess what I'm saying to you is that uh, uh, the top teams here in Formula Barat are hanging on to the uh, cadre of, of top teams in the world, but they're hanging on to the back of those teams instead of pushing the front edge of those teams. The difference being that if you're following what they're doing, you're never going to beat them at what they're doing. Uh, the way to beat them at what they're doing is to focus on the goals that you're trying to achieve uh, and create a team uh, design process management and team organization that will support those goals, which uh, I'm looking forward to happening in the very near future here. So good job again, folks. Thanks very much. Looking forward to seeing you next year. Hopefully that'll be on the ground.